a little bit about a used breeding cycle. Now that we know who's going to be doing the breeding, with whom down here. So um, to give you some background, every 16 or 17 days is their cycle. So, and their gestation or their pregnancy is um, 145 to 152. So I figure five months. Okay, so five months to make the baby. So we always want ones with have, that have a body condition of three or more. You know, you've seen that, you chose accordingly. To get the maximum ovulation, they need to be on an ascending weight gain. They need to be feeling like Oktoberfest, life is good, let's make lots of babies, you know. So they, you, they have to be growing in their, uh, in their life is good. Already. No parasites, feet trimmed, you know, everything all in med ready. A mature you has an average estrus that lasts a, a fer fertile time that lasts 30 hours. And the first timers, theirs lasts only about 15 to 18 hours. So, and interestingly enough, rams always seem to prefer the older ewes. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the scent of the ram that brings them into heat. So one of the strategies that I can do because I have so many sheep is that I I put the rams in a strategic location in group and then I put the girls far enough away that the ram won't get through but that she can smell and observe. And so the, the smellier your ram, the better for Esther, for bringing on her, uh, her heat. Um, so some people have used a teaser ram, like for instance if you have um, a ram that doesn't have good genetics but he's got a lot of libido then they will castrate him and then use him as a teaser in with the girls and then he will get them all excited about it and then you take him out and put in your your good ram and that's uh, a way that you can do it's been done you know for centuries to do it that way but um but i don't do any castrations so i don't do that the first few days is they're, they're all getting in sync and getting into heat so some people have called that a silent heat, like the first 17 days of a cycle. So like if I go, if I put a, a, re, a ram out on rent a ram, I'll make sure that the person has them for at least two or three cycles because the first cycle might be just getting all the girls to ovulate. I don't know the condition of that, those ewes. Um, so you can, by synchronizing the ovulations, then you don't wear out your ram. And you'll notice from the board there that I have I have five rams in, in action this year, and each of them only got four ewes, and then now in the second phase, they're gonna get some more ewes. So this is so that you don't dilute the amount of sperm that he has for her. So what about color harnesses? You see some farms, they have these elaborate color harnesses on the, on the rams, and um, the idea of that is that every 15 days, you change to different, uh, different color. So you know if he was, if the sheep was bred, if the ewe was bred by him, by whom was he, she bred, and when was it during this time or the next time? As you know, we play ram bingo in the winter. You know, it's one of our little follies here. But ram bingo is a very useful thing because it tells us which of our rams have the most libido, which of them brought the girl, have the scent that the girls like like hippo, he must really just smell great because he always wins ram bingo. And it's not because he's jumping around on them all the time. It's because he probably brings them all into heat by his deep voice and his scent. So, so it, that's something to make note of for the quality of the ram. If you wanted to keep a ram with a U, um, you think about it, you have 365 days in a year, but you only need this ram for a very short period of time. I mean, you actually only need them for 30 hours, but, but you don't know which 30 hours. So I keep them in for two cycles, and then I, if I, if, according to the genetics chart, then I can, at that time, swap and put in one of the beginner rams to see how he performs whether he's interested, whether they like him, etc. And also, if there were one that wasn't bred for some reason, then he would be able to cover that girl. 
and that saves on on vet bills because I don't ever have to have them preg checked because the males know if they're pregnant or not. And it it's a it's part of the training of the young rams is to get with some of the experienced ewes and then they get the picture. Hello, 550. So we're going to go down here now to to see Casper. He's a big guy, and he has what every you needs from the ram. He has really good testicles. He has large testicles. In traditional times, they would uh, actually, like if you went to an old fair in Ireland or England or somewhere, they would be pulling out their measuring tape. I meant to bring one today for you. And they would pull out their measuring tape and check the scrotal circumference because if the, if the guy doesn't have testicles, he's not going to be able to do all these U's. So the nutrition that he needs is very, very important. The most important thing for them is zinc. Zinc, 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 and selenium. They have to be up on their zinc and selenium because without zinc supply, the swimmers won't be swimming. The ram should have a body condition of three plus. If, you're, if you are choosing among your rams that you're gonna to use to breed, um, you would want one that's a little bit overweight because he's gonna work so hard chasing those girls. If you are in a place where it's really hot and humid, if you were in your home base, you'd better make sure that the ram doesn't get too overheated because um, that's the reason why a scrotum hangs down is so that there's air ventilation. But if you have a hot, humid situation, the, your rams can go sub-fertile. Uh, you know, they they they're affected by heat and humidity so lots of shade lots of water yes exactly exactly we don't have that problem up here right ours stay really cool <laughs> okay and so and if he smells bad to you then he probably smells good to her <laughs> all right let's go down to see him about courting behavior. <laughs> she comes back, we'll, we'll have an example of that. Um, so the first thing you need to do when you think about breeding is you need to set up for the hands-off period of time. Because remember in December, January, February, you know, that, that we're, we're going to try to have be hands-off, not moving them around and stuff like that. It is a ram, so you do, you know, the, the good ones stay and the bad ones go to the freezer, but Still, any ram can be dangerous. So you have to set up for hands off of you and ram for at least 30 days. No moving, no handling, all this kind of stuff. That way the egg will attach and know it's going to be all right. So when we see courting behavior, we're gonna, this is what we're going to see. So you can watch for this. He approaches. He sniffs her vulva. He may flutter his tongue because that's a way of, of enhancing his sense of smell. She will respond by urinating so he can read her chemistry and then he'll sniff her some more and he may curl up her his lip he sniffs her urine because it's like reading the news curls up his lip this confirms she's sexy okay then he may nudge her he stroke her with his foreleg and that's his way of asking will you stand for me and then he will sometimes twist his head, make all kinds of little sounds, little grunty sounds. Here's the man himself. Oh, thank you. She will turn her head to the ram and stay in place or run. And so that's... And then um, you'll sometimes see him steady his chin on her rump. And <laughs> that's kind of like he's taking aim. He wants to make sure he's lined up correctly. And then if she stays, then he will mount and complete the breeding. You have to, number one, respect because you can't buddy him. You can't scratch his head too much and things like that because he gets in the habit of pushing them. So um, avoid going in the pen with him because he's a ram and they're strong. 
and you know he might take an idea that you're male and he doesn't want you near his girls. Um, he must have fresh water and minerals daily. Strong fences. Don't underestimate. <laughs> don't underestimate the strength of him. Um, I use physical fence. And I've had them go over the fence easily. That's why I don't put use on one side of the fence and him on the other. There's a whole pasture in between. Um, if you do electric fence, you have to have six to seven joules. Now a joule, for those of us who don't remember about electricity, is one volt per one second. So you need six or seven, so it's like a big wallop to say, no, you can't go over there. doing the courting behavior. She's doing the eating behavior. So pretty soon he'll say, will you stand for me? So he'll be licking with his mouth, just trying to catch the scent. Will you stand? Will you stand? She turns her head to him like, well, consider it. She's not particularly, she's probably not in, in estrus right now. She didn't even give him any uh, urine sample to, to, to check out. And it, it didn't much matter to him because he's happy to see her anyway. <laughs> but she probably will not be conceiving of this on this time. Also, he's quite efficient with his time. Yes. Yes, this tongue fluttering is just his way of increasing his ability to smell her scent. Thank you.